here I have all of my stuff nicely laid out to go over with you. I thought as I was packing up today, I would do a quick, uh, sort of a quick rundown on everything that I carry with me and what it is and why, I guess, because I've never really done a proper gear overview and uh, this is a great time to do it because I have everything right here. So number one, like I mentioned last time, is this drop cloth. This is a tent footprint that came with my tent, which is right there. Um, you're supposed to put that under the tent. I use it as a mat to go in front of the tent. And it's nice because when I'm packing up, all of this stuff doesn't have to be on this dirt. Which, as you can see by my boots, this dirt covers everything if you start kicking it up. So, it's nice. Um, first thing I have is my shelter, which could be a hammock. Um, in my case, it's almost always a tent. Uh, I advise that you ditch the tent bag and get some of these rubber gear ties. Um, that way, you never have to worry about how tight you're rolling this thing because it never has to fit into a bag like that. All you have to be able to do is put it into your actual duffel or strap it onto your motorcycle in some manner. And so how, how well you actually roll this ceases to be an issue. If you get some of these gear ties and you just start tying up all your stuff like this. I don't even know where the tent bag is for this tent. I know I still have it somewhere, but I love this setup and I'll always do it like that. <sighs> Number two, I've got my sleep and comfort category. I like to break everything down into a category and I'll go over that in a minute. But I have my sleeping bag and I have a sleeping mat. Sleeping bag is rated for zero degrees and last night it was far from that. It was probably 70 degrees. But I slept on top of it, and eventually the night I got into it, never zipped it up. Highly recommend carrying a sleeping bag that is rated for much colder weather than when you ever expect to encounter, because that way you'll always be warm, and if it's warm outside, you can still sleep on top of it. But if it turns out to be 20 degrees, you won't die. You know what I'm saying? Sleeping mat adds a significant amount of comfort when you're sleeping on stuff like this. Uh, I used to think it didn't add that much comfort, but the reality is when that's in my tent, I crawl on that with my knees because it hurts too much to put your knees on stuff like this. And uh, in addition to that, this thing offers insulation from the cold ground, which can increase your cold resistance on a really cold night. So having a good pad and a good sleeping bag are critical. Next I have flashlights. I have this flashlight here which is extremely powerful at night I could pretty much shine it on those mountains it's crazy probably don't need something that powerful but I recommend always carrying two flashlights at least because you're never gonna know when one's gonna break in your bag or the batteries are gonna die or it's gonna turn on in your bag and the batteries are gonna die you have to have redundancy when it comes to lights granted these are arguably not that necessary in my experience because normally you have the moon and at night when you're out here alone the moon really makes a huge difference but it's nice when you're trying to find some crap in your tent where you hear a noise and you want to go look for it um, but then this light here is uh, it's a little inflatable pouch and it's a solar light so you can leave this in the sun and it'll charge up and the charge on this thing you can barely see those lights but this thing is at a three-star charge for months. I've not even really had to charge it, and it's uh, it's basically it's a great reading light. I just turn it on, and blow it up, turn it on, set it behind my head. It'll light any book you're trying to read in the dark. But those are the two lights I bring with me. Because um, I also have my phone. It has a flashlight on that, so if I really needed to get around in the dark, I could end up using my phone. Next, I have an extra pair of socks. I don't really bring much other clothing besides like a sweatshirt usually and if it's really cold weather I'll bring I'll bring a hat usually and I bring this neck gaiter which is fleece. You can if it's not cold enough to wear that stuff you can always put it into the sleeping bag stuff sack and you can use it as a pillow which uh, is very handy in my opinion. Next I have a book because you're going to have downtime and you need to have a book to read. Otherwise, you're going to sit there in your tent staring at the roof for like hours and you're going to be bored out of your mind. <laughs> Those are the parts of the video I cut out because there's not a whole lot to do between hours of three and six. 
Next, three Nalgene bottles. Each one of these bottles carries 48 ounces of water, which I believe equals just under a gallon. I recommend carrying at least this much water, because last night I drank two of these. Okay, yesterday and last night, and now I've got one. It's about two-thirds full. So there are days where I'll only drink one. There are days where I'll almost finish all three. So very important to carry enough water. And I like to carry Nalgene's because this is a robust container. I can shove this into my bag. I don't have to worry about it getting punctured. I don't have to worry about it getting squished funny. A lot of people carry these water bladders, and that's fine if it's in a backpack. Uh, I would never stuff a bladder into a side bag or into this bag because it's not going to hold up to abuse and if your bike falls on it you got a whole other problem I'm just not really a fan of that type of water carrying technique next I have my pistol I don't usually carry it in a, sh in a sheath I usually carry it like this if I'm feeling lazy I just wrap it up with a rag because I need a rag for cooking anyway arguably not necessary in fact, I've never needed it really. It's essentially a noisemaker for unruly animals, um, which almost never happens. But like last night, I heard some coyotes killing a rabbit easily right over there, like right over there. And I have a bag with meat juices in it that I have tied up in here, which is, as far as I know, it's airtight. Nothing can smell inside there. But you never know, if three coyotes came over here and decided to try to get into my bag, I'm not going to let them, okay? And to do that, I could get out and scream and wave my hands, or I could just fire a shot of 9mm and watch them run off into the, into the wind. It's up to you. Um, it may not even be legal where you live, which is fine, because like I said, it's really an almost borderline unnecessary tool. Next, I have my cooking supplies. I have everything laid out here to go over with you, and I have a little bag that I put that stuff in, and I keep that stuff in. So whenever I go, I know I just need to grab my cooking bag. First, I have an MSR pocket rocket stove. This thing was 40 bucks, I think, and it screws onto the top of a propane container, and it lights a flame. It's extremely handy for boiling water really quick. Um, and I don't always use it, because I like to try to build campfires these days. But like this morning, I used it to boil water to make tea. And uh, I like to have it as a backup, just in case it's raining or something. Um, next, I have fire starter gear in this bag. It's a pretty beat up bag, so you can't really tell. But there's paper in there, there's matches, there's a lighter, and there's a block of fire starting material. I have a lighter, I have some matches here. And uh, I like to keep that in there just so I have some way to start a fire if I don't have any kin like kindling and tinder. I have a knife, which is usually just used for cooking, so I just throw it in the cooking bag. Um, I, I use this old timer because uh, this holds up to, or this blade holds up to rust better than the Mora knife. I keep the Mora knife on my backpacking bag, and I use that when I go backpacking now. Here we have first aid. There's a lot of stuff in here. There's gauze, tape, band-aids, uh, batteries, cleaning wipes, um, quick clot gauze, all kinds of stuff that hopefully I'll never need to use. It's up to you to figure out your own first aid kit. I'm not really going to break that down and go into that. Here I have my flask for alcohol if I choose to bring it, which generally I do. You don't have to bring alcohol, by the way. You can enjoy camping without drinking. I just like to do it because it's fun and uh, it's, good. it's good conversation for the video. Um, Next, I have this flask, which contains uh, olive oil. And I like to keep that with my camping kit so that when I bring vegetables out here, I can sprinkle olive oil on it. I know I have some. I always have a supply of it, and that way the, the vegetables kind of stay uh, moist and everything when I'm cooking them. Then I have this little container here, which, as you can see by the white cap and black cap, should probably be for salt and pepper. I have pepper in the black cap, and I have my steak seasoning in the white cap and uh, carry that with me so I can season food. The little container is really handy. I got that at Cabela's for like, I don't know, five bucks. It wasn't very much. And I have these uh, Tokes tongs. This breaks down into a spoon and a fork. Pretty handy. And I can pick up a steak with it or vegetables or whatever I need. And then of course I have my cutting board, 
which uh, is used for processing the vegetables and stuff. Then I have this metal cup here, which is a, just a basic Coleman cup from, from Walmart. And I've bent the handle so that it can be clipped onto things. Normally the handle comes out at a 90 degree angle. Uh, at one point at home, I also put a cup of water in here and marked it. And then added another cup of water in here and marked it. So if I'm ever backpacking, I can, uh, I can pour water in here to boil water for a freeze-dried meal. And I know how many cups I've added. But... I use this to boil water on the pocket rocket stove. Uh, if you get a jet boil or something, they have they come with their own container. I just use this because it works just fine. And then I have this, which is my tea. It's basically, I have a boiling cup and a drinking cup. And uh, other than that, and that's really it. But to go over my uh, camping checklist with you. Instead of going down individual items, I've made categories. That way I know I haven't left out flashlights or I haven't left out tools or something like that. Category number one is shelter and sleep, which is the tent and the sleeping bag. Got to have those things if you're going to go camping. Category number two is fire and cookware. That's all of this. If you're going to go camping, got to be able to start a fire. You're going to probably want some cookware. Number three is food and water. Water is there. Food no longer exists because I ate it. But <laughs> you'd be surprised when you're packing up your bag and uh, you realize you haven't added water to it yet. Um, so it's nice to have this checklist. Number four is flashlights and tools. Two flashlights there. I have a set of tools in my, uh, in my dry bag here that I could use to work on the bike if I needed to. Number five is clothing for weather. You should always look at the weather for the place that you're going to be. So you know how cold it's going to be because um, if you're camping at some place, it's going to be 30 degrees at night. You're going to want thermal uh, base layers, basically, because it's really important. <laughs> and you can always take it off and you can always use it as a pillow if you don't use it. So this is like the bare minimum that I'll carry because I knew it was going to be warm tonight. I knew I wanted to change the socks, a hat, and a neck gaiter just in case I wanted those things. Um, but that's it, really. That's my checklist. And I like that layout because with those categories, you can you can switch you can uh, switch stuff up. You don't have to have the same thing every time. You don't have to go through it and say, okay, I have one hat and one pair of socks. Like you can just do whatever you want, as long as you have clothes for that category, or you have shelter and sleep for that category. You just look at a category. You say, do I have those items? Yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna stuff all this stuff on my bike, and uh, then we're gonna take off. Now I'll try to cover all this up. Yeah, right. I don't know if I can put these rocks back, to be honest with you. I always try to make it look like I haven't been there or been here. But it seems like no matter what I do, there's going to be evidence. really don't feel like doing this. Alright, that's good enough. <sighs> Forgot to warm up my bike today. I normally warm it up, but it's pretty warm out here, so I thought it'd be fine. tank bag is pushed back towards me too far. It got messed up last night. Well, I don't really have a topic for today. I thought the, uh, the gear overview might be enough. So I'll leave, you, I'll leave you with a question. If your house burned down and you lost everything, what would you miss the most? That's a conversation I have with my wife after the hurricanes were hitting uh, Florida and stuff. Think about it sometimes, because like obviously we have home insurance. So like if house burned down, we'd theoretically get reimbursed for all of our losses. But how much do you care about your stuff? I guess that's the real question. 
Like, does any of this really mean anything? Because I know for some people it does. It's like these possessions you've collected throughout your life are a big deal. But I feel like for me, I wouldn't, I don't think I would be bothered by losing house furniture and all that stuff. I would be bothered by losing tools that I've collected for purposes such as my camera gear. Like, I don't want to have to rebuy all this shit. Even though I would have the money, and I guess I could just start over and get better stuff, I don't know. It's like the idea of, like I've built something by collecting tools to work on cars or motorcycles, and I've built something by collecting tools to make these videos, and losing those tools would, uh, would definitely affect me. But I think above all else, the thing I would most be most worried about or most upset about losing would just be my computer hard drive because it's got pictures on it from years ago you know I wouldn't want to lose that stuff even though I almost never look at it it's like I almost never look at it but when I do I'm really happy I have it but even then that's probably not that meaningful in the long run. It's just entertainment, really. I mean, isn't that what pictures are? Look back at an earlier time in your life. <laughs> I guess they're memories. I don't know. But I think it's an interesting question to ask people because no one really knows what to, how to answer. Because nobody wants to lose their house. No one wants to let their, all, their, all their stuff burn down because that's a, that's a rough situ it's a rough situation to be in. I think if that really happened to you, your main objective would just be getting shelter and, and food <laughs> without going broke. <laughs> well, you can't just live in a hotel. Or maybe you could. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to check out the Patreon page. I am, uh, I've got a lot of cool rewards set up or that I think are cool rewards. Uh, there's going to be behind the scenes videos on there. Like if I'm out here when I turn the cameras off, if I feel like recording a little bit for the patrons, I, that's where that kind of content will go. And I'll also probably talk more about camera gear on there and my production process, maybe my editing process. Um, and then eventually I like to start doing giveaways to patrons. So consider that. Even if you don't want to be a patron, go over there and check out the uh, the account that I've set up and see what you think. Oh shit! This got me in the eye. Oh gosh. Glad there wasn't a thorn on that. I would have been blind. So yeah, remember to like the video if you liked it. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more of it. And if you want to be alerted when the videos get uploaded, click the bell icon below the video. Here's a question. Where did I come from? First time ever that this has happened. This video may have just gotten more interesting. When in doubt, it's best to go with the road that's more highly traveled. And I feel like I would have uh, probably remembered this. That's 9111. This is 9354. Who the hell knows? I think this is right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Say you were bad.